the end of the school year is right around the corner, I promise. But that means you are gonna need to have some highly engaging student activities ready. Don't worry, I've got you covered. Today we are kicking off the summer STEM challenges with Drip and Dash. Now in this challenge, students are developing a water scoop purpose-built for volume and stability, and they're going to use it in a relay race called Drip and Dash. Let's take a moment to check out the materials and the STEM challenge cycle and then dive right in. This is the STEM challenge cycle you should follow for every challenge. I've defined each step in another video. I've added a pop-in card to that video here, as well as a link in the description. Just a quick note about materials. Now, every group that's doing the Drip and Dash is going to need two buckets, one at their start line and one at their finish line but they do not need to be uniform in size or shape at all. I have just a couple of examples here, but you can even use coffee cans, plastic bins, whatever you have around that can contain water. But it does need to have an opening big enough for the students to put their scoops in. You can have the students either design their scoops in partners or individually, and then when it's time to conduct the race, you can group them up into bigger teams. As always, I like to start simple with criteria and constraints, so the drip and dash scoop must be able to be held with one finger and no dimension can exceed three inches. But if your students are very young, feel free to increase that to four or five inches and you can also let the students use two fingers to hold their scoop. But you're definitely gonna want a size constraint there because you don't want the students creating huge scoops because then the drip and dash becomes more difficult for you to conduct. If you wanna increase the difficulty, you have several options. The first is to decrease that size constraint to just one or two inches. You could require that students develop two more scoops. I usually use that one when students are working with partners and each scoop in that case needs to be a different size or shape or use a different dominant material. There are also a few things you can do when conducting the race to increase difficulty. First, let's look at that criterion that the scoop must be able to be held by one finger and that's meant to test the stability. Most students will hold it with a little crook in their finger in order to help stabilize the scoop but you can require that the finger must be held straight out and that does make things more challenging. You can add obstacles or cones that students need to weave around. You can require that as students are racing the course that they're actually holding two scoops, one in each hand. You can even require it be a zombie run. You can even conduct this as a three-legged race where each partner is holding out one of their scoops in their outer hands. Students are gonna take two volume measurements, one before the race and one as part of the race. Before the race starts, students will test their scoops for the liquid volume. We wanna see how well the scoop performs in isolated conditions. And we do this because we want students to have an idea of how successful their scoops are prior to the race. And because some scoops might actually hold quite a bit of liquid volume, but they might not be very stable, which we will find out in the relay race. Now it's ideal if you have graduated cylinders or beakers with funnels, but if you don't have that equipment available to you, you can use just your standard everyday measuring cup from home. Now for me, the first line I can actually read on my measuring cup is 100 milliliters, or on the other side, customary is a quarter cup. Now I'm fairly certain my scoops are not gonna be quite that successful. So in this case, I would tell my students, you need to measure how many of your scoops do you need in order to get to 100 milliliters. So maybe that's two scoops, two and a half scoops, three scoops. There's probably going to need to be some estimation, but it's a way around not having all the scientific equipment available to you. All right, so let's talk about how to conduct the drip and dash relay race. As I said before, you're going to group students together. And for this race, you don't actually need an even number in each team. Teams will line up behind a bucket full of water, bucket A. Set up an empty bucket receptacle, bucket B, at an appropriate distance for your age group. I usually stick with about 100 yards. You will set the time for the race, say 60 to 90 seconds. Teams will send their members down the race course as many times as they can until time is called. At the go signal, student one in each group scoops water from bucket A and places the scoop device on just one finger. He or she runs or walks to bucket B, dumps the water into the bucket, and races back to his or her team to tag or hand off to the next person. If teams are alternating scoop designs, instruct them ahead of time they must wait to be tagged before filling their scoop for their turn. During a turn, if a scoop breaks, falls off the finger, or the student uses more than one finger to hold or adjust the scoop, that student loses his or her turn. He or she returns to the team and tags the next person in line to continue the race. Once the race is over, each group must measure the water in their bucket B. Alternatively, rather than taking a true measurement, teams can simply compare results. Set aside a bucket C. One at a time, each team dumps their bucket B into bucket C and marks their water line on the side of bucket C with tape or a marker. Bucket C is emptied back into each group's bucket B after they mark their water line to prepare for the next group. 
Have all groups keep their bucket B until a winner is named in case there's a close call that requires a true measurement. Because the students probably either designed individually or in partners, teams are gonna have more scoops than they really need. Still have the students bring all of them out to the race with them because if one of the scoops fails during the race, they can use one of the others. I let the teams choose the strategy of which scoops to use for the race. They might decide to let every individual use his or her own. They may choose just the best scoop design and transfer it like a baton. Basically anything goes here, they can use all of the designs, one of the design, or anything in between. To extend on this, you can have students do some research into freshwater scarcity. You can have them look into the helicopters and planes and the scoops that they use to put out forest fires. Now those are basically this challenge on steroids. It has to have massive volume and a lot of stability. So have them look into what materials do they use? How much water do they actually hold? You can have students do some research into what a dripping faucet actually costs the person paying the water bill. You have all the basics to do this challenge in your class on your own, but as always, lots of extra goodies in the resource, so take a second to check it out. This time-saving resource contains everything you need, including modifications modifications for use with 2nd through 8th graders. You'll still need to gather the simple materials, of course, but the rest is ready and waiting. You'll get a line next-gen science standards, links to my STEM Challenge how-to videos to help you get the most from each challenge, and the drip and dash materials list. In teacher tips, you'll find premise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, measuring results, and cross-curricular extension suggestions. You'll find an editable criteria and constraints list so you can tailor the challenge to your students. For student design analysis handouts, there are two versions, four-page expanded room for response for younger students and a two-page condensed space paper saver version. You'll also find a set of group discussion questions. In the extension handouts, you'll find a calculating water waste worksheet as well as math extension and process flow templates. This resource is available individually and is part of the discounted summer and mega STEM challenge bundles. Links can be found in the description below the video. Make sure you're following my store on Teachers Pay Teachers and subscribed on YouTube. I'm going to be back next time with the second challenge, Pick and Pack. Have a fantastic week. I'll see you next time. <music>